Hi all, welcome to The Sim Hangar. My name's Mark and today something a little bit different. We're going to be taking a look at Pimax's top of the line VR headset. It's the Pimax 8KX. Now this headset has a number of very unique features which should make it ideal and perfect for VR and simulation enthusiasts. And we'll be putting that to a test. Today we're going to take a first look we're going to see what the configuration options are and in Microsoft Flight Simulator we're going to take it for a quick spin. I'll follow this up with a number of other videos where we really put it through its paces and see what it's capable of. The version of the 8KX that I have is the KD Mass. And what that means, it's got the built-in modular audio system. It's got built-in on-ear sound. Overall, my impressions in terms of build quality, etc., well, it's favorable. It's got a, it feels fairly rugged. It is made of plastic, but a lot of the plastic is flexible and giving. And the plastic itself, it's got a rubbery feel to it. It does come with a number of face coverings. This is the standard thin one, and it also comes with this thicker face covering with insets here for people who wear glasses, which is important for me. It's not the lightest headset. It is a little bit front heavy, but Pimax have thought about that by including this type of head strap with this very thick back foam supported by a further piece of foam inside and this adjustment and i'll just demonstrate quickly how to fit this properly and comfortably raising the back strap as high as it will go fit your face first into the front panel then pull the back strap right down adjust the top velcro strap so that it allows the back strap to go towards the very lower part of the back of your head this back strap needs to fit a little bit lower than perhaps what you expect it to. This design distributes the weight and takes the weight away from the front of your face. There should be no weight on your nose. The VR headset is now balanced and very comfortable. Before continuing, let's just review the specs for the 8KX. First of all, it runs on Steam VR. SteamVR is able to run Windows Mixed Reality compatible programs such as Microsoft Flight Simulator with a free add-on. One standout aspect of this headset is it features a 200 degree field of view or 170 degrees measured horizontally. This is the widest field of view available in any headset aimed at the commercial market at this time. And it's mainly for this reason that I'm excited to try it because the benefits in Flight Sim, well, I think they're obvious. And if that wasn't temptation enough, they also come with two 4K panels. That's 3840 by 2160 per eye or 7680 pixels horizontally. So the potential promise here is we can get a wider field of view without suffering in terms of graphic fidelity. Also of interest to me is the fact that it comes with a dual engine mode and what this means is the input can either be 1440 and upscaled to 4K or you can use a native 4K resolution. What this really means in terms of performance etc I don't know but I'll certainly be giving it a test and report back accordingly. If you wear glasses and the frame size is more or less standard well the 8KX can accommodate that. You do need to use the thicker foam pad, as mentioned earlier, but for those that wear glasses, it's one of the most comfortable headsets that I've tried. In terms of accessories, it is compatible with the Vive range, which includes the wands or controllers and the base stations. It is also compatible with the excellent Valve controllers. Pimax also offer a range of accessories themselves, as well as different sound options, a hand tracking or leap motion option, and eye tracking. This Pimax product requires base stations to aid tracking. It can be used without base stations, but the range of movement is limited and you can't lean, for example, in VR and tracking is iffy at best. It's fully compatible with HTC Vive base stations and also the 2.0 base stations from Valve. 
It will operate with one base station, but two is recommended for best tracking. As I've still got the original HTC Vive, I've got two base stations, and I've also got the HTC Ones. To activate the headset, you need to install the Pi tool from Pimax. This will set up your headset and any accessories, and in addition, will allow you to configure the headset as required. It's well laid out, fairly intuitive and easy to use and to follow. And within the various menus, you can do just about all the configurations that you need to. However, the Tour de Force from Pimax is an application that they call VR Experience. And in my opinion, this is the best and most comprehensive config utility available and is highly recommended. It allows you to configure all options whilst still in VR. Let's take a quick look. You're now seeing what I'm seeing in the headset. Welcome to Pimax's VR experience. The only difference is I'm looking at this in 4K and you're seeing it in 1080p. On the right hand side is system information. I'm not going to run through all the configuration options within this guide. This is, after all, a first look. We will dig a little deeper into this in my upcoming video. Also on the right hand side is the ability to customize the user interface, the panels that we're looking at. As you can see, I'm using the Vive One to interact with the interface. You can also use a mouse, no problem at all. What I do like about this VR interface, it's been very cleverly designed. It's very easy to follow and fairly intuitive to use. There are instructional guides available, but I found, well, I didn't really need to bother with that. It literally took me 5 to 10 minutes to find my way around. Hmm, that's a little too orange for me. That's better. Moving over to the panel on the left. This gives me a quick summary of the primary settings as they are currently. My FOV is currently set to normal, which is the second highest setting. The 150 degrees for normal setting refers to the horizontal. So I'm not sure, but I'd guess the diagonal would be something in the region of 170 degrees. There's also large, which would give you 200 degrees, small, and then there's the 90 degree one, which Pimax affectionately call potato. We'll cover some of the setting options in an upcoming video, such as parallel reprojection and smart smoothing. On to the center panel. And under the settings sub-menu is where you can get all the different configuration options available to you. And for most of these, you can change them on the fly. There's also an advanced option, and this gives you even more configuration options. And the settings are specific to the individual profile, some of which are default, and in case of Microsoft Flight Simulator, well, I've added that one myself. There's a further advanced feature, and here we can really start digging into some detail if we want to. We can choose native 4K, or we can opt for the upscaling option. Now the AKX has a IPD manual adjustment on the headset, but further details can be adjusted here, including individual eye offsets. This is a rare feature not found on many headset configuration guides. The other very useful feature is you can change the Steam VR settings right here in this panel. This is very useful indeed. You can set both global and individual application settings. Within the application, there's also the very handy feature to import applications that are not native to Steam. Now that I've imported Microsoft Flight Simulator, I can now set up all the individual settings directly here within this config guide. There's also a quick and easy way to look at profiles and edit them accordingly. I'm currently on Microsoft Flight Simulator, and I've clicked the Color Adjustment tab. Here you can adjust backlighting, contrast, brightness, and change color saturation levels. If you've got a Pimax, you should be using the VR Experience menu option. Well, the real test is trying it in the sim. Now, I have not tried out all the different settings. I was anxious just to give it a quick go. So these are my somewhat conservative sim settings for my initial first look and test. I am using a 10900K and an RTX 3090 with 32 gigabyte of fairly fast RAM. I'm sure the system can do more than this, but it's good enough for a first test. For this, which is my second flight, I'm in Iceland, and I'm at one of the handcrafted airports following the last world update. The aircraft that I've chosen is the newly released Caronado 
Cessna 170B, and of course I've got the Tundra tyres on. This latest addition from Carinado is a little bit of retro magic. If you like a bit of bush flying and you like it low and slow, well, this could well be for you. Recording in VR is difficult. This is the steam mirror. There's the traditional view, but the view I've decided to choose is to zoom into one eye, simply because it's the easiest to watch. This might cause a little bit of distortion, but it's the best option available at the moment. Whilst you're not necessarily seeing what I'm seeing, it is giving you a more accurate representation of the frame rate and smoothness I'm experiencing in the VR headset. My settings for this first flight, I've got the view set to normal or 150 degrees horizontal, which is about 170 degrees diagonal. Parallel projection and smart smoothing are both on. I'm flying in native 4K mode at 75 Hz. Fixed foveated rendering is off. What I'm seeing in the headset, well, it's super smooth. And the wider field of view, wow, it's a bit of a shock when you first see it. It is absolutely stunning. Okay, I've got to come clean here. I'm absolutely surprised and amazed how well this works. I have tried it at 170 degrees horizontal or 200 degrees field of view, but I was getting a little bit of juddering and screen tearing. So I'll need to work on the settings for that. Super sampling in Steam is set at 70%. The other VR headset that I regularly use is the HP Reverb Pro or G1. And I think it's generally accepted that its color reproduction is a little bit washed out. It's not terrible, but it's not great. One of the first things that struck me with the Pimax 8KX is how vivid and great the colors are. And as I've shown you earlier, I can adjust these to suit my personal preference. The render quality set in the headset is 100%. And Pimax recommend if you've got a 30 series graphics card, it should be 1.25 or perhaps even a little higher. I'll be keen to try that. At 4K, the clarity I'm seeing is amazing. One of the common problems I often have with a VR headset is my IPD because it's 60, so it's quite narrow. But using the manual IPD adjustment on the headset, I was able to get it down to the minimum, which is 60.3. And it works great because the sweet spot on this headset is relatively large. Following a recommendation from VR Flight Sim Guy, I have game mode and hags off, and it certainly seems to have improved performance. I have a personal preference for on ear sound, and I find the ear cups on the 8KX they're soft and very comfortable, and the sound reproduction, well, I'm impressed, it's very good. Although perhaps not best tested with this aircraft because at the best of times and in the real world, well it sounds like a diesel tractor. There is a tiny amount of slight distortion at the periphery of your vision. The wider your field of view, the more evident this is, but it's not prominent. It's much better than I expected it to be. And it's not something that would give me problems. This is not the first Pimax headset that I've tried. I did try in the early days the first edition of the Pimax 8K and I wasn't overly impressed, I must say. But the 8KX that I'm using now, well, it just demonstrates how far Pimax have come. The Pi tool had a reputation for being very buggy and difficult to use. And once again, I've got to say, with VR experience, well, it's got to be one of the best out there. It's certainly the best that I've used so far. Now, I've never been a major Carinado fan, but I must say they've done us proud with this C-170. I've never flown one, of course, in real life. The closest I suppose I've got to is the uh, 152, but the flight model does seem to be very realistic. She might climb a little faster than we expect her to, but the way that she reacts to rudder and elevator and aileron input, well, it's very realistic indeed. There's an airport in front of us and we'll attempt a landing from the other side. So we'll fly past, loop round and go for a landing. I just love this scenery in Greenland. It's absolutely awe-inspiring. This is one place that should be on my bucket list. 
In the Pimax 8KX, when you're in the very wide field of view and you zoom in, a little bit of screen door effect or pixelation is evident. But it's at a level where you've really got to look for it. In normal mode and flying as I am at the moment, well, it's just something I'm not seeing. There's no indication of mirror that I've seen in the headset so far. It's crystal clear. Connections required for the Pimax 8KX are two USB 3 ports, although one of them can be a USB 2 and a DP port for your graphics card. Thankfully, there's no separate power connection required. Up to this point, what are my reservations and concerns regarding the Pimax 8KX? Well, it is a big piece of kit, and certainly heavier than my HP Reverb Pro. I'm also unsure of how much heat it may build up, so I'll need to do a longer flight to see how I manage with both any heat buildup and, of course, with the weight. This is a headset, after all, that is designed for the enthusiast when only the best will do. But you do need to be prepared to tweak and play about with settings to get it just right for your system. So there is an element of time investment. Personally, I don't mind that, but it is something we need to be aware of. But my overall impressions, and this is only my second flight in the Pimax 8KX. I'm impressed and encouraged, and I look forward to tweaking the systems and getting it running as best as I can. And as I mentioned before, in an upcoming video, I'll be able to share those with you. But we're down safe and sound in the Cessna 170B. Overall, it's been a pleasurable experience. Over the next couple of days, I'm going to be experimenting and putting the 8KX through its paces and trying out different configurations to see what gives me the best performance and how far I can push it. And I'll certainly be sure to bring you the end results in my next video. I hope you found this useful and informative. Thank you, as always, for joining me. Stay safe, see you soon, and bye for now.